guys, welcome back to the channel. Man, the month of May is here. Where to start? Sponsored by Op Optima Batteries. Uh, man, I got a good one for you guys today, like a, a really good one. I've been working on this uh, this video for a while. I've been studying these lakes, um, but I want to say a couple things. Let's do some house cleaning. Uh, last year, just for you guys, like I get lots of requests for people to, for, to do your lakes. And when I go down through there, so I'll, each month I'm going to mention the, what lake we did last year for the month of May. Uh, you know, last year in May, I did Kentucky Lake, Ohio River, and the Potomac River. I'll have a link here in the video that you can go back and look at those. In April for last year, I did Table Rock, Lake Fork, and Norris Lake. So just so you know, there is some archives there. You can go back and see some of those videos. All right, so let's give the battery away, just like we do every month. Big thank you to Optima Batteries for supporting us on this. And I randomly went down through there and I selected Sean underscore R underscore Schultz fishing. Uh, Sean said these where to starts have been my lifeline while I've been waiting for the ice to get off my lake. And he is just about there. Thanks for all the tips, Adrian. All right, Sean, man, just for, for leaving that comment, man, it was that simple. You're getting an Optima battery, buddy. But I, I have to have you send me an email to my website, go to, to Edwin Evers Fishing and uh, there's a form and all that. Just fill that, that email out and I will get you a battery certificate from the great folks at Optima Batteries. Uh, really, really a cool giveaway. Just, you know, use that battery, get it for whatever vehicle you need. Just get what you need. Um, we will send you one. Big thank you to Optima Batteries for sponsoring this video series. All right, with that said, the lakes that we are going to do this month, kind of excited about them. I got a list here of when I went through everything. Man, Charles Cook, you have been asking me about Barron River Lake in Kentucky for a while. I've studied that lake. We're doing that lake today. We are going to do Milford Lake in Wakanda, Kansas from Rod Cashman. Uh, man, it's a cool lake. I'm pretty excited about doing that one. And we're going to do Eagle Mountain Lake from Cody Boyd. So those are my three lakes. I have been on Eagle Mountain quite a few times. Never been on uh, Milford, and I've never been on Barron River Lake. So what you guys can take from that is, just as if I'm practicing for a tournament, this is what I do. I, I go and I look at the lake. I look at it on my C-Map right here. I look at it, you know, on my Google Earth. And, man, I just... I study it. I learn about it. I go back through time and, and I just, I, I study it in general. Um, so let's do, uh, let's do, let's do, uh, let's do Milford first up there in Kansas. Kind of a cool lake. Uh, it's going to take me a minute to find it. There it is. I put some, put some waypoints on the map. Let's see. I did a little research on the size of Milford. So when I looked at Milford Lake, man, I was like, what I know about like, like lakes that look like this to me, it looks like it could get pummeled by wind. You know, I, I just, if, if this is anything like where I live in Oklahoma, um, I just, I, I look at this map and it's like wind. Like I, I feel like, you know, we're talking about the month of May, where to start on Milford Lake. I, to me, would be looking for areas that are protected out of the wind. That's going to be better water quality you know, clarity, quality, uh, just the fish gravitate to those areas to spawn. And, and May to me is going to be the month those bass spawn on this lake. And, uh, you know, so you can see here, I picked a few areas. So like, let's go to this one right here, because this is a prime example of what I'm talking about. So when you zoom in on this pocket right here, You'll notice it's not all the way in the back. And, and the reason it's not in the back is, I, I, let's look at the lake at, at, at normal level. So right here, we got the lake at normal level. Um, this all looks really good back here, and I'm sure it's good. I mean, you could catch fish back here, I'm sure. But when I drop the lake just a little bit, uh, not a lot of, uh, of you know, the, I've got a good rock bank right here that those fish would stage on right here possibly, but no deep water close by. Um, I like this pocket right here because it's something that for a place for me to start, it's quick, it's short, it's easy, it's deep, it's got water in it year round. I've got good rock banks down each side. 
It's in the sun year round. I got lay downs down this old side. They're steep. To me, that is like a spot where I could go start and get a bite. That's just one. That's just one that a place that I like, you know, I think of spawning fish. If I was to zoom around and, and look at a couple others, uh, this spot right here I marked because um, I feel like, again, it's protected from a north-south wind. This pocket, it runs east-west. It's got a, a really cool feature of an old road going across it, you know, for a staging spot. You know, this, let me show you what it looked like with the water covered up. You don't even know it's there. You can see the old road right there. I take the water back off. It'd be a cool staging spot for April, a staging spot when they come back out. Uh, but then when I get back here, I'm looking for color changes. So you can see this right here is like a rock bank. You know, it's it's a rock bank. It's going to be in the afternoon sun. I've got deep water still close by because you got to realize this, this picture, the water is really low. Let me fill it back up right here just so you can see. That's what it would look like. But I've got deep water right here where all this back here, still the deep water is right out here. So to me, this bank right here is a spawning bank. I just think it would be really, really a good spawning bank. It's, it's a good hard bottom. I think in a lot of lakes like this that are flat, they get silted in really bad, finding a hard bottom. You know, this, that's what those fish are going to spawn on. You know, if I was to take a step further, this bank right here looks hard. Those corners right there, this corner right here looks hard. Uh, you know, those are the areas that I would look for on a place to start in the month of May at this lake because I feel like these fish are going to be spawning. I marked a few other areas here. I just want to show you that that I have to go check out if I was going to this lake. Look at this little backwater pond right here. So I've got a bar across this that's going to kind of protect it. You know, this water back here could warm quicker than, than say, the rest of it because it's got this bar. A little narrow opening right here. And then it gets deep again back here. So to me, that's a spot that those fish are going to spawn. You can see it's got good depth in it. It's got some uh, lay downs. It's got, you know, steeper banks, um, a spawning spot, like big time a spawning spot. I, I think it's a super cool spot. I did, I, I don't want to spend forever on this lake, but I did look at it a lot. I marked one other spot that, man, I promise you, I feel like I could go there and catch a fish tomorrow if I had to, is this creek right here. And why I picked this creek is because look how hard this is to get into. So the lake's low. You got this big, huge flat out here. You know, nothing's out here at all. Uh, just looks really cool. But then you, you drop off in this creek, and man, this creek is deep. This is the only drawback to that creek, but I, 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 because it's got a access to it. But that could be for somebody with a kayak angler. But that's a drawback for me in a bass boat because it can get some fishing pressure from land uh, when it would be really hard to get in there from uh, you know the lake. So when I fill it back up, you can see when the lake's full, you know you're going to have to go idle across this shallow flat out here. But then once you get in this creek. You know, that's got depth, it goes for a long ways. It's just to me is a, a spot that, man, there's going to be fish in it. They're going to gravitate to it. That's going to be warm water. They'll spawn back there. Uh, it'd be a really, really good creek to go fishing. Creek fishing 101 in the spring, in May. I would be in there. I would catch fish at that lake. Rod, man, that's a great lake to, to break down. Um, those are four or five spots to start in the month of May. You know, there's a, there's one other one that, that you just is screams attention, but I'm sure, you know, the pressure this lake gets, everybody else is fishing it too. But man, this bridge right here, you know, it's a super narrow opening, a big spawning bay in the back. Anytime the wind blows, that's going to be great. It's going to be a great shad spawn bridge. Uh, that would be like also a number one spot to start right there at that Highway 77 bridge. So that was Milford Lake in Kansas, a cool lake. Hopefully one of these days I get up there and I get efficient. All right, let's go to Barron River Lake. Charles Cook, thanks for sending that in. Uh, cool lake. Um, let me zoom out here. We'll get over to Kentucky and uh, talk about Barren Fork Lake. I got it right here. Okay, so when I look at Barren Fork Lake, um, 
Man, it's got lots of river arms on it. I think it's about a 10,000 acre lake when I looked it up. I think, let's see, I looked up the lake level. It's a little high right now. It's 559. I think normal pool on that thing's 552. To me, I think this is one of those lakes that they draw way down in the wintertime and they bring it up to like a summer pool. And I feel like any lake they do that no matter what lake it is in the country, when those fish wait, they know every year that water comes up to this, to this level, that's when they're going to come up and spawn. So, you know, I think this lake is supposed to be that 552. It's falling right now. And I don't, I don't feel like fish really get up there and get comfortable. And there, there's a few trying to spawn, but the majority of them, like they're, they're up there shallow, but they're just like, going through the motions. Like, I think they wait till that water stabilizes. Um, I think if the, if the lake happens to be, if it was a low water year or on your lake, you know, and, and that water's starting to rise, they wait till it gets to that level. They've been there year after year after year and they do it every year. So keep that in mind, you know, on your lake, and this is a lake that, that's like that. This lake happens to be high right now from all the water. So it's falling really hard. I also think those fish are gonna hold off because it's falling. Uh, uh, what, I, what I've read a little bit about this lake, it's got spotted bass, largemouth, and some smallmouth in it. Uh, it's a neat lake. I mean, it's really, really cool. I marked four or five spots to start. Let's say if we wanted to start for smallmouth on any lake, like I always, I love these islands for smallmouth. Down the lake, on any lake that I'm starting, and this lake has one right here, these islands like this, uh, man, they're just, that's where the concentration of smallmouth generally are. Um, when I show you some different water levels on this island, that's a really high water level right there. When I pull the water off, that's probably a normal level. So when I get it a little bit lower, you know, those, those, those smallmouth, they're, they're going to live out on these bluff ends. They're going to be roamers. They're going to be all over the place out in this big mass of, of water down here. But then when it gets time to spawn, they're going to be on the backsides of this island spawning. Um, you know, I'm going to be throwing a little swim bait, a mojo rig, a shaky head, a jig, uh, you know, a biffle bug, a ned rig. Um, but they're going to spawn all down through here. I mean, just I promise you, if there's smallmouth there and very many of them, they're going to spawn. I really I would check out this little hard spot right here. Uh, I feel like that's a little bit harder than the rest. You know, you've got some bigger rocks on this point right here. Uh, I promise you're going to spawn. This to me looks a little muddy. I feel like you know, I look at these color changes. That's what I'm looking for. You can see from here to here, it's a it's a different color dirt than say right here. They would they would spawn. I feel like they'd spawn right here around this, especially right there. That's a really hard spot. Uh, but that is a, th th this is hard and it's a flat. That's the stuff I would look like look for on where to start for smallmouth. So let's zoom out and look at a couple other areas on this lake. Uh, I picked one down here in the southern river arm. So when I ran down this southern southern river arm, uh, I noticed man it's narrow, narrow, narrow. Bam, it gets wide. So why choose right here where it gets wide? Because there's more flats, more fish, more habitat. Uh, we talk about that a lot in the channel. And, uh, you know, is this going to have the most amount of fish? A lot comes together here. I've got a good secondary creek. I've got two big flats. Uh, you know, wind would be my friend in this area. Uh, lots of good things. So when I look at this, the back of this creek, man, it's it's flat. Like it's... I. <laughs> Yes, you could probably catch fish back here in all these bushes. And I've got the water pulled down. So when I put the water back up, yes, you could, you might catch fish back here, but you might not. Cause it's, to me, it's a long ways from deeper water. If, if I was to fish anywhere in the back of this, it'd be right here because I have the deepest water with this Creek coming back in, but this is not where I'd start. I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you the difference between that one and this one. So you see this one, I've got water depth all the way back already. You know, just to compare, see how far it is, that shallow water? This one here, I've got depth. I've got good depth. I've got water in here already. And then to take it a step further, look at these isolated trees right down through here. And I, I have to think that these might be cypress trees when I look at them right here. I don't care what kind of trees they are. I would start right there on those trees because if... They're anywhere from two to one to five feet of water. There's going to be a fish coming, going, spawning, eating 
on those trees right there. To me, that's just a phenomenal spot to fish. I just, I really like that. And I've got good depth close to it. Uh, I just like it. I, I like it a lot. I got a little point right here. It's got a hard bottom. Um, you know, when I take the water back off this point, um, I can just fish a lot of high percentage areas. You know, this is going to be a little bit shallower than say these trees. It's a harder bottom. You know, we talked about that color change. Uh, just a neat area of, 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 of where I think a person could catch some fish on that bank right there. That's, that would be a spot that, man, that's a, that's a spot to start. That's a, that's an optimal battery spot to start. <laughs> All right. What else did I put in here? I put, um, I came up this river right here and I, I marked one, two, three, four. I don't know if we can get to all of them, but we're going to try. Uh, this pocket right here, um, I just, man, I, I, it's a small pocket. It's someplace I could fish quick. It's got this brush right here in this drain. So, you know, if I'm the beginning of May and fish are staging, Man, that brush pile right there, they could be sitting over that sun and just getting ready to go right up here and spawn in these bushes. Uh, I just, I thought it was a quick, small, easy pocket to pull in and fish. Uh, you know, if, if this lake fishes more like a table rock lake and those fish get out a little deeper, spawn out deeper, this point right here would be a spot that, you know, I, I like those those long points in the back of a pocket. You know, some of the first places those fish pull up on, it's a... Uh, it's, it's, it's just a neat looking pocket to me. I, I like it a lot. Um, I, I marked this right here um, more for, for deeper, deeper spawning fish. So, you know, they winter on this bluff, they summer on this bluff, you know, or out off this tip. Well, when they spawn, they come right around here and they spawn on this kind of stuff. So let's say, let's say wa water visibility there. I don't know, guys, I'm, I've never been there. Let's say water visibility there is four to six feet. Well, then, you know, my little multiplier, I double that a lot of times or, or they're going to they're gonna be right beneath that. So they're going to spawn, say, six to eight feet of water. So if this is a six to eight foot of water, zone right here man I, I feel like that would be a spot i'd go throw that ned rig or carolina rig and catch some spawning fish you know on these little harder banks you can tell that's harder that's a little bit harder uh that's harder right there just because of the color change looks like there's a uh, some stumps some rocks right in there uh but that would be like a, a deeper area at those fish spawn right around those main lake points. I know they do that like at Table Rock, at Beaver, at Bull Shoals, at a lot of lakes like that. They'll just come right around those, those channel bluff points. You know, this would be another example right here. They winter and, and summer right out here off this. Well, they slide around here and they spawn right here on this point. Um, this looks pretty muddy, yucky bottom, but you know, it's a swim beach, maybe not quite as good, but you, you get the gist of it. This would be harder right over here. Then, you know, they just slide around here, spawn right down that bank, main lake stuff, you know, and that water's clear. Like I think this lake would be six foot of visibility. They spawn main lake a lot. They do that in a lot of lakes and, and, and it's just a great place to look. I marked two more areas here on the Barren River that I wanted to, uh, to show. I like this pocket here. It's just an east-west pocket. It's got an old road. You can see this edge of an old road going down through there. That's going to be a hard bottom. It's going to have a little drop off. Um, it's got a little, little point back here. I just feel like this pocket right here, you know, I just put the waypoint to find the pocket, but I feel like this, this pocket right here is deep close to it. It's a good spot to start. I mean, it's just, it's a spot fish are going to spawn in. Uh, again, I think the month of May, that's probably what's going to happen on, on a lake like this. Um, I marked one more, got way up this river and I marked this pocket just because, uh, it's way up the river. I, I feel like, you know, you've got water here you got water you know fish that could be staged and all down this bank and then when that water comes up they could go back and disperse in all these bushes so if i showed you what the water looked like up you've got a lot of indentated stuff right here that's a lot of stuff to cover you know the title of our video is where to start so i try to narrow it down a little bit more when i when i look at this pocket i've got deep water really close i put water in it it's just a small area, like it's this area I could go get a bite, get my confidence going, 
get something started just because it's really close. You know, I got a good flat out in front of it, got the river really close, fish come right out of here, pull right into that small pocket. Uh, I don't know, I think to me that's a great place to start uh, when fish are spawning in and around that stuff. So neat lake, hopefully one of these days I can get to that lake. Those are some areas that I picked on that lake. Uh, I'm interested to see what you guys say about that lake. You know, I, I looked at it fairly quick and just marked a few areas, but a lot of different river arms on that. I could have gone a lot of different directions, but uh, hopefully those are some areas that you guys can apply to your lake wherever you're at, or if you're in this area fishing that lake, hopefully you can apply them and uh, it'll help you catch some fish. All right, last, Eagle Mountain Lake. I gotta get my C-Map out for this just because, uh, I like my sea map. Um, Eagle Mountain Lake's a cool lake. It's northwest of the Dallas-Fort Worth area on the Trinity River. Uh, I think it's about a 10,000 acre lake. Um, I looked it up, it's about three and a half foot low. So what that tells me is it's gonna be different than it normally would. Um, when I first look at the lake, what, what stands out here to you? So I've got, to me, I've got I've got this dark purple zero to three. Then I've got this next one like four to eight. To me, this is like the number one area to house the most amount of spawning fish. Like number one, this this creek is the same thing. To have two really great spawning flats like that together, man, this is going to be a spot to start. So let's take us to May in Texas. May in Texas, fish are starting to get offshore and the shad spawn's going on. So if, if I was looking for a spot to start later in the day, it would, it would be like out here maybe off this point because I feel like a lot of fish spawned up here. There's probably still going to be a bunch of males up there, but then I, there has to be some brush right out here off the tip of this point. Um, that would be a, one of the places I would start if I got there in the afternoon. Uh, now, Let's go to let's go to let's go to my map over here. Okay, so when I zoom in on this lake, you know, on this map, um, you can see this was that area that we were just talking about, you know, and, and with water in it, you just got cattails and and timber. It just looks phenomenal. Just a really neat area for a lot of fish to spawn. And when you take the water off of it, see if I can find a, a low water photo here, right here. You can see that point that I was pointing out there on my sea map. You know, I just, I feel like that would be a good place to start if they were offshore. You can see there's an old house foundation there. There's some brush piles, just a, a cool place for those big females to pull out and, and go to their summer waters. Now, the other, the, like the other thing that, that I feel like super strong, I would be sitting there fishing a shad spawn. Like, every marina on that lake and, and like when you look at this marina right here what a cool marina to, to to go shad spawn because i like to find marinas at the miles of spawning pockets i've got one right here got this you know really good you know hard hard banks all the way back through there and, and a marina at the mouth of it like that to me is is a shad spawn 101. Uh, then when i look zoom out like another spot right here when you look right here at this pocket Again, at the mouth of a spawning pocket, and I've got a deep seawall. See this seawall right down through here? And it's in the shade. You can see it's got shade right now from an afternoon photo, but I'm gonna have shade on that seawall 9, 10 o'clock in the morning to extend that shad spawn. You know, being on that side of the bank, it's gonna be a great place to start, I promise you, for that shad spawn. You know, and, and just to reiterate, we've done some videos on shad spawn. Uh, you know, that water temperature needs to be in the, the upper 60s. If you got, you know, shad falling your baits in, that's happening. Here's another seawall. On a secondary point, you know, coming out of a spawning pocket a little further down the lake, maybe a little later in the season as that shad spawn, but you've got a really good seawall right there. So between those, that marina, between those seawalls, between that, that offshore spot, that's the stuff I look for for a shad spawn or for the month of May when I'm 
uh, at a lake like Eagle Mountain. It's the cool lake, a shallow, a shallow fishery that uh, um, is definitely a neat lake. Um, guys, I hope these videos help you. Be sure you leave me a comment. You know, tell me a lake that you guys want me to talk about in the future. You know, next month's June, so think about June fishing. Um, you know, so many times I get a comment on a lake that, that may be way up north and then I'm still in March or something and it's got ice. But uh, June fishing on the lake will be the next one I do. You guys leave me a comment and just like every month, I will randomly go down through there and I will pick a winner and somebody will win an Optima bag. But guys, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you following along. Hit that like button and we'll see you next week.